Oh, hey guys. We're back with part two of our introduction to Animate series. If you missed part one, you want to go back and check that out. That's where we created this awesome effect here that we've got with like the little swooshy bam going on. So, all right, we've got this animation going on. Let's move on and see what's going on in Adobe Animate. This is version 2020. Now, there's a lot of new stuff that they've recently been developing. So we're going to cover all of that in this series to try, try and get you what you need to know to do all of the different animation that we're going to take on throughout the rest of the class. All right. So if we come up here to edit preferences, we want to take a look at the dark theme. So some people like the light theme. I prefer the dark theme. That's something that might've been different when you first opened Adobe Animate. That's why it looks dark. That's a big one. I always wondered that when I was starting into these programs, like why does theirs look completely different than mine? That can be a big one. If you guys want these settings already good to go, you can go and download my settings project. I've got it in the link in the description. If you just sign up for our email list, I'll send that out to you. No problem, it's totally free. And that file is going to be right here, intro to animate. And that's going to give you this little guy that sort of does a little blip. I'll just hit control enter so you can see that going on. You're going to get this for free along with like all the different settings we're going to take a look at today. Then you would come down here and you'd say edit preferences, import preferences, and then you'll have the A and P file. I called it Kaiser original when I exported it here. I might name it something different. That's a little less vain when we're looking at it online. All right, so you're gonna find that a &P file that you download and import it, and then you'll have a setup like I do. If you wanna customize it yourself from scratch, that's totally cool. Here's how you might do that. So you'd wanna go into window, and here's all the different windows that I have open. So I've got the color panel, the align panel, which is over here shared with the color panel. Right, I've got the properties panel, of course, that's going to be very important. Tools, timeline, and edit bar. I don't know what the edit bar is. Oh, that's the edit bar. Edit bar is important, guys. Make sure it's turned on. All right, so we've got all these going on. Now, if you come over to edit keyboard shortcuts, that's the other big one that you're going to get when you install the preferences file automatically. There's just a few key things, <laughs> key things that I've edited in the keyboard shortcuts that I think are super valuable so you don't fat finger certain keys and mess yourself up. The first one is going to be object mode. So object mode, there are a lot of things with the word object in them. And by default, the key that would have been here would be shortcut when you open up the default set. Yeah, that would be J. And what you do is if you want to customize this so that J does not do object drawing mode, which I highly recommend, we would duplicate it here and say shortcuts. Uh, yes, create something called shortcuts there. And then you just come in here and you hit that little X next to the J and voila, it is gone. Now, what is object mode, you might ask? And why did we just remove it? Well, object mode essentially puts every brush stroke that you make inside its own container, its own little box. And it makes it separate from all the other brush strokes so they don't blend together nicely like you would expect in Photoshop. This is much more akin to painting in say Adobe Illustrator where every stroke is kind of its own contained object, etc. So it might be handy if you love Illustrator and you wanna work that way. It might be terrible if you're more used to Photoshop. So choose wisely. I like to turn it off because it just messes up my flow when I accidentally press the J key. The next one you wanna get rid of is camera. That's gonna be on the C key. So another one that's very easy to hit, and I like to just remove that out of there, get rid of that. So let's go ahead and get rid of camera. And finally, the bone tool, which is on the M key. Another one you wanna get rid of. All right, if you wanna experiment with these tools and find out what they do, that's great. But in my workflow, when I'm making 2D effects, I just never use them, guys. So just get them out of the way. Another one to note, let's see, I save that set, why not? would be under the tools panel right here the tools drop down over here you notice in the previous tutorial i was saying press k for paint fill that's a really great one but i know a lot of you might be used to having that on the g key if you use photoshop a lot 
I actually change it in Photoshop to also be K because I started using Adobe Flash first, like years ago, before I even started using Photoshop. And I think it's strange that like gradient fill is G, but also regular fill is also G in Photoshop. And so I like having them separate. That's just me. You can change this. It's your key set. You can set up whatever you want. All right, moving right along. We've got keyboard shortcuts and we've got panels. All right, so a few things that I've set up here for you to check out. If you look here, there's a couple things. It's pretty standard functionality for how you can move stuff around inside of here. You've got different panels that can tear away. So if I click and drag on the word color up here, I can actually drag that whole panel out and do as I will with it, right? And then if I hover it, there's a few things that'll happen. It'll either dock there, and so it'll be aligned next to the entire thing there, or I can hold it and hover it and it'll dock above. And now it creates another stack over here on top of the others. Or I can hover it until it does a box. And that will put it inside of the same thing as whatever partner was in there. And then I can conserve space here by squeezing these up. I can also conserve space by double clicking. So if I double click in the open area here, it will actually minimize that whole panel and give me a lot more real estate to look at whatever I want to look at here. Double click again, brings it out. I can also minimize the entire stack by collapsing it here with this, and then I can pop them out as individual icons like so. It's kind of handy, kind of nice. And yeah, that's basically how I arrived at where it is now. I have the scene panel here. I don't usually use scenes, so I can just drag that out here and I can close that and it just goes away forever. All right, now what do I wanna show you guys next? Oh yeah, the tools panel. All right, so tools panel over here on the left side of the screen is very handy, super useful stuff going on over here. You can edit what's on here by hitting these three dots. This is new in the newer versions of Adobe Animate. So if you used it in the past and you haven't used it in a while, this is gonna be really cool. So you can easily just come over here and say, oh, I like this tool, and so I want it to be a part of my panel. So I like the paintbrush tool, so I'm going to drag that over here underneath my regular brush tool because I have the room. I don't have to embed them on top of each other. If you are compressed for space, you can actually grab this and put it on top of another one, and then when you click and hold, you see that you can choose between them. Now, you want to click and drag on it, here and then move it off if you want to separate them. I found that clicking and dragging on the pop out doesn't work. Oh, you see, I just put the brush tool back in the box there. I don't want to do that. You can also add little dividers, which is kind of fun. It's like I want the paint brushes to have their own thing, be divided off. And then I want, let's see, sub selection tool is pretty useful sometimes. I'll use that. The lasso tool is really great. Put that up here in my selection things. I'll put the polygon lasso on top of there. That's kind of nice to have. So kind of easily switch between those. Let's see, eyedropper. Sure, why not? Eyedropper goes down here in the paint bucket area. And also this one here, the ink bottle tool. Uh, I just use hotkeys for all of these anyway, so why not layer them on top of each other? All right, bone tool I never use. Uh, a lot of these I just don't use. The, paint, the pencil tool is now the paintbrush tool, which is really confusing because classic brush tool and paintbrush tool are really similar. And I actually don't even know the difference between the pencil tool and the new paintbrush tool. They seem to do the same thing. I'm gonna go into what they do in a later video, but we're gonna dive into like painting and drawing and anime and all those things. Don't worry, we're gonna have plenty of time to go over it. Okay, so moving on down, we can hit this three button thing. That's good for now. And I probably should have saved my .amp file after doing all this. So you can come down and you can say preferences and export preferences, and that'll save out that .amp file one more time. Finally, we have the two different colors. We've got fill color and stroke color. So this solid box here is the paint fill. And then the stroke color is going to be a really, really thin line. I guess you can also make them thick lines, but think of it as like a border around a box and then the stuff inside the box is the paint. 
So again, I'm going to go into that when we, when we do drawing tools. Just so you know, as a heads up for now, you can switch those colors here so that you know it puts the black line into the fill and the fill into the line and you can switch them back. It's a fun little feature. And then over in the color panel here, you'll see that these two colors are identical to these two colors. And anytime you change one, like so, you can pick whatever you want. It will change it over here in the other. Okay. So moving right along, I'm going to go away for a second so that we can see down here in the timeline. All right. So in the timeline before, it was very simple. We had our animation going on here with just one layer. And then in this file that you can go and get from vfxapprentice.com, we have multiple layers and we have a lot going on. So I'll dive into this. There's going to be a lesson devoted to just managing the timeline. I'm look for that in a, a video uh, shortly after this one in the same playlist. But for now, just look and see. You can click around in different layers and it's selecting the artwork from those layers as I click around, right? The highlights layer, the sparks layer, and the splat layer. And then I can create new layers and then I can click and drag that layer around. I can double click it and rename it with whatever name I want. I can click here and I can convert these into outlines. So that's kind of hard to see that purple, but there you can see that orange pretty good. So by clicking this, it switches the preview to just the outlines of it, which is really handy when you're trying to do really complicated things and seeing what's going on in that layer as I scrub through, which I can do by clicking up top here on this little blue marker. I can see that it's orange, and then I can always switch it back to its colored version. Also, you've got hide and show, which I can click up here. It hides and shows everything. There were two layers down here that were hidden, the ring layer and the lines layer. And that's just the guide layers that I used when I was animating. I put in a ring and some lines. It makes it a lot easier to understand what's going on there. All right, so those are set to guide layers. So I can right click here and I can say guide. And basically the difference is they will not export if it's got this icon next to it that makes it a guide. So it's just something for you for reference and help you to understand where you're at in the file. And it's not something that you want to be in your final artwork. It's really handy for that. You can also click here on a layer and hit the trash button or the delete key on the keyboard to remove that. Finally, moving over to the properties panel. So properties changes. You might've noticed that this has been changing the whole time. I'm gonna give it some more space because there's a lot going on over here on properties. I'm gonna double click on the library to get that out of the way because we've got all this stuff over here. I guess now that we're on the right side, I can come back. Hey, I'm back. All right, so properties panel. Notice that this is new in the new version of Adobe Animate 2020. It's got tool or dock or object or frame. Now, the reason why object and frame are not lit up is because no frame is selected and no object is selected. <clears throat> so if we select an object with the selection tool or V for short, Oops, I hit B, <laughs> my bad. <coughs> Excuse me, so sorry about that. If you select that there, now object lights up as does frame because coincidentally we are selecting an object on a certain frame. So I can come through here and I can say all these different fun things I wanna do. The tool is no longer lit up because I had the selection tool chosen, but if I hit B, now I can also go over to, to the brush properties. So this is really fun. You can check this out on your own time. You can see all the different properties you can change on your brush. You know, whether you want to make it like a big brush. So now I've got like this big thick brush or I can go back down to like, you know, a teeny tiny brush or maybe somewhere in between. Find what works for you. One weird thing that they did was they left some of the properties for the brush over here, which is where they used to be over here on the tools panel, but also duplicated them over here. It's kind of nice to kind of have both, whatever suits your fancy. Um, if you go to the document settings, that's where I changed the background color. You can come down and switch the stage color and change it to black, 
change it to green, whatever you want to do. Now, the stage color in Animate by default is just transparency. Even if you choose a color here, it's still going to be transparent. Hang on one second. I've been at this for a while. Got to take a little bit of a water break. <clears throat> Clear that throat. So stage color is there. You can also change the stage dimensions. You can make it much bigger if you'd like. We went with 512 when we first created it, so that's fine. You can scale the content with it, which is a fun feature. Like if you want to scale the whole thing up, not just the stage size bigger, you want to actually make the artwork bigger with it. That can be really cool. And so on and so forth. Okay, so that's the properties panel. Frame, I won't go too much into frame because it starts getting a little, a little much when we haven't even talked really much about the timeline. So yeah, that's all the fun things with all the different settings and properties and windows. Have fun tinkering with that. Next up, we're gonna go into painting inside of Flash. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> like my eyes are watering, I have to cough so bad. We're gonna go into like painting and really what was that that we were doing in the first video, making a really quick effect and how do we make it better, more advanced, more awesome. And where are all those tools located anyway? All right. Stay tuned for the next one. See ya.